Good afternoon, everybody on Educated Economist here. So I was just thinking about something that that I remember hearing Jerome Powell say a long time ago. It wasn't a long time ago, it was a few years ago. And I remember them asking, how much money do you plan on printing or something along that question? And he said, that depends on how much demand for the Fed's liabilities there are. And now, I don't know if a lot of people remember that, but it's not a statement that you hear a lot. When you hear the Federal Reserve or when the Federal Reserve is questioned about like the quantitative easing and you know all the uh, money printing that went on and whatever. That's a question that isn't really talked about or at least the answer to that question. It depends on how much demand for the Fed liabilities there are. And now I got to thinking about that when you have this narrative of de-dollarization and it is pushed as dramatically as it is right now, it only leads me to believe that they are wanting the people to know this. They are wanting the people to believe this. Okay. It's not just some information that happens to come out that needs to be, you know, warning the people. It's something that they want them to know about. I think of it very much like, like all the COVID information that came out. Right, everybody all of a sudden became some sort of expert on COVID. Right, they had all the stats and all the understanding of COVID. And I thought to myself, no, you don't, you ain't no doctor, you ain't no, you know, you don't know nothing, right? And then all of a sudden, here I'm here, people talking about de dollarization, right? And again, I listen to them talk, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, you're no, you don't know anything about the economy. I mean, you know, some stuff, you hear some political rhetoric that you talk about, but you don't really know much about the economy. Like, I mean, I'm sure of it just by some of the statements that I hear. And so when I think about like, okay, why is this information being pushed as dramatically as it is? Because the Federal Reserve had a problem, right? There was a demand for their Fed liabilities, which is all the money that's out there, all the dollars, that's the Fed's liabilities. And so when you have this demand for the Fed liability as dramatic as it was, and how is it that the Federal Reserve is supposed to be able to provide the world with this liability? Like, where do you, where do they get up? Where do they get the, the reasonings to do all this money printing to cover all these liabilities that are out there or cover all these debts that are out there that are due in the Fed's liabilities, the demand for so I wonder, it was just like, well, how do you how do you alleviate that? Well, one, you have to provide the world with the liability, right? So you have to do quantitative easing or something, right? In order to get all this money printing to be done in order to start covering the debts that are coming due. Because if you're not rolling that old debt over into new debt, then the debts come due. That means there's a demand for the Fed liability. So we were coming to that point back in 2019, right? where it was debts were reaching their top. They weren't going to roll over into new ones. They were going to start coming due. And this was all over the globe. And as those debts were going to start coming due, the demand for the Fed liabilities were going to start increasing. It was going to start strengthening the dollar. Everything was going to start crashing. People, it's, it's like, it's really hard to start wrapping your head around all this stuff once you start, like, figuring it out. Right? So here the Federal Reserve has this demand for the Fed liabilities due to all this debt that is written around the world that is due in dollars. And it's not debts that the United States did. It's not debts that the corporations did of the United States or the banks did of the United States. It doesn't have anything to do with the government. It has to do with foreign entities who are writing debts in dollars. And then the demand for those dollars. That's what it's really all about. And so now how do you how do you tamper that down? Right? How do you say, man, we need to we need to cool the jets? Well, you put out that narrative, right? De dollarization. Ooh, bad dollar. Nobody wants the dollar. Don't touch the dollar. Right? And then people start getting out of the dollar. And it starts alleviating the pressure for the Fed's liabilities. See, that's really what I think has taken place here. I mean, as I sat here and thought about it for a little bit, and I'm thinking, man, this there is no reason why people who have no clue about the economy should be talking about de-dollarization. 
I mean, they should be. I mean, they absolutely should be. But there is no way that this is sparking their interest, right? I mean, maybe some people it does. Maybe it's finally that one thing that finally says, man, I'm finally looking at the economy and I'm starting to realize it. And it was this de-dollarization that, that did it for me. But if you truly understand it from the beginning, then this isn't a surprise, right? What's happening here? You know, again, you think about some of the the sanctions that are taking place out there, well, sanctions can be lift like that, over, right? Now, all of a sudden, everybody's happy. Trade starts to take place again as soon as these sanctions are over. Look at Venezuela. They're moving, what, 25% of their, of their oil now goes to the United States. Remember, they were like a big no-no. Oh, man, don't, don't like Venezuela. We all hate the, hate the Venezuelan government, right? But now it's cool. See what happens now. All of a sudden, they, like... They're now shipping oil to the United States. You know, this is this is this can happen. You know, things can turn on a dime like that. And now, what you end up doing when you when you create the situation is you when you put sanctions on people and you have like this idea of de-dollarization, you create new trading partners, right? You find new ways of supply chains to be created. It's not like this stuff is working out for China. I mean, their manufacturing is slowing down. They're having population decrease problems. I mean, they're not going to do well going into the future. And it's not like, you know, China is going to be able to be a trustworthy country that's going to be able to provide the world with a safe and liquid asset like the U.S. Treasuries. It just isn't going to happen. I mean, I just don't see that happening. It could happen. I shouldn't say it isn't going to, but it, it's, it's not very likely. Right? I mean, is there any nation out there that's willing to provide the world with a safe and liquid asset like the U.S. Treasuries? No. And if you don't have that, then what are you going to back all the money? Like, how are you going to do, hold on to the money? The money costs, like gold, like anything else, right? If you do not have a asset to back it up, the, the money with, right? Then what you will end up having is a cost of holding money. You will have a cost of holding gold. If you have a limited supply of it, then the most industrious nation will end up accumulating all the currency and the rest of the world will end up suffering. So if you do not have the safe and liquid asset like the U.S. Treasuries to be able to provide a continuous supply of it. See, think of it like the U.S. Treasuries, not like as if it's gold, but think about it like gold on a global, glo like a gold standard, right? If all debts were essentially due in gold, all everything then replace that idea with the u.s treasuries right because the u.s treasury is essentially what is used in place of gold and dollars are the way that it is facilitated the trade when the debt comes due right it's not necessarily dollars but the u.s treasuries itself and the willingness of the united states to take on that much debt in order to issue out all those treasuries which I know, again, it's just like, it's very hard to, to wrap your head around this concept, but that's what it comes down to. See, when you do global trade, it's not necessarily done in dollars, it's done in U.S. Treasuries, because you at least get a little bit of a return off of it, and they're as liquid as dollars, as, as if they were dollars. You can instantly, instant, instantly sell them, right? And this is the point about it. There's very few things out there that are, are like that where you have almost an endless supply of it and you can have it that liquid, right? China doesn't provide that. Russia certainly doesn't provide that. And no other nation does it. So once it comes down to the idea of having just a Bitcoin or just a gold standard or something like that, it's not a matter of just switching over to something like that. When you fall into that sort of condition in which that takes place, then the most industrious nation will consume all the money, will take in all the money as they export all their products until eventually they deprive the rest of the world of money, push them into poverty, and then they themselves will have to redistribute the money and fall into poverty themselves. It's the, it's the cycle that's going to take place. That's why this power shift is moving from the west to the east. We were the manufacturing powerhouse. We, weren't the, we were the ones who provided the world with all the great, wonderful products out there. They sent us all their gold, and then we deprived them of their gold. And the next thing you know, we're providing them now with dollars that aren't really backed by gold, but backed by debt, the U.S. Treasuries. 
You see? And now we're sitting in a position in which that if we do not continue to issue out debt, we fall into poverty. Because how are we going to manufacture for ourselves? We just don't have the manufacturing base like we once did. We import. We're an importing nation. And that's the and that's the real situation that we're in. To to end that would mean some serious pain for people. And you know whether they like it or not, I mean it's coming at some point. How people are willing to deal with it, I mean, that's up to them. But again, this idea of de-dollarization, it's being pushed out there. And when I hear people who typically would never be talking about the economy talking about it, it leads me to believe that this is like a forced idea out there for a particular purpose. And for me, now that I think about it, it's to try and relieve some of the demand for the Fed's liabilities. That's what I think. Uneducated economists, you let me know.